day folks. I am in Avon Park, Florida today. And if you follow motor racing, this town is just north of Sebring, Florida. That might ring some bells. Also, there's some cycling endurance events held there sometimes. Those points aside, I am right near the downtown of Avon Park. Right behind me is the California Zephyr Silver Palm, or well, basically one of their rail cars. It's obviously a bit displaced. And adjacent to that is the Avon Park railway station now and museum. So we'll kick off the tour of this area, the town. We'll give you a look at that and uh, we'll see what else we can find, then get rolling with our ride. There we go, California Zephyr Silver Palm rail coach up close. Let's take the stairs and have a closer look. For those who don't know, I'm a bit of a railway nut, so for those who don't like the railway stuff, you'll have to fast forward the video. So there is a live railway track, which I believe, from memory, is on Amtrak's route, which heads down towards Miami, Florida. And there's the railway station, no longer used by the service. And there's my steed for today, the T-Lab X3 Adventure Bike, and check out those monstrous wheels. Those are DT Swiss GRC 1400 splines, 650B. I've got them fitted with Panerezzo Gavel King, SKs, and 650B by 48. They are seriously wide. The red I'm doing today may see some sandy spots, so I said I need the biggest rubber I can fit into this bike. It looks pretty chunky. Honestly, the bike appears as if it could steamroll anything. I do not know when this railway station ended active service, so I'll have to overlay that. But as I said earlier, it is nowadays a museum. There we go, there's the pertinent information right there. Unfortunately, the museum is not open today, but the old uh, COVID-19 has kind of changed things anyway for the time being. Let's keep looking around. Here we are on the main drag. There's two streets running either side with a nice little division the trees and such pardon the wind noise if i have my plan together it'll be heading in a south direction and i'll have a lovely tailwind coming This is the Brickell building. I'll have to look that up. There's neat architecture there. Here we have the Chamber of Commerce building on our right. And this was a theatre at some point. Now it's Faith Temple Ministries. I love those old theatre buildings. Very cool. It is City Hall. Let's have a look at the plaque on the wall here. I sometimes forget to do that. Here we go. Constructed 1928 to 1934, renovated in 1922. This is the Highlands County Tax Collector's Office. Highlands County being my location. There is a nice mural walking us to Avon Park. And we have a little lake just across the road there, Lake. Verona and as you can see from the water it's a little bit choppy a bit windy today let's continue the tour of downtown these are shuffleboard courts popular among the seniors crowd apparently Bill Owens auto sales and on the right here this I believe is the jacaranda of course I didn't research beforehand I believe it's a hotel if I've gotten that wrong I apologize very distinct building. Well, it was a hotel, I'm guessing. Now it might be private offices and so on. There you go, the Jacaranda. I 
Well, nowadays the Jacaranda is a restaurant. In fact, I'll go across the road and do a shot so you can better see how lovely this building is. Check out these gorgeous oak trees that are just across the road from the Jacaranda in the center of the street. I wonder how old they are. I've mentioned this before in videos, I'm not a religious bloke, but some of this uh, church architecture is quite interesting. That's the first Baptist church of Avon Park. Lovely historic home right near downtown. Rightio, it's time to get rolling. Got about 90-ish miles on tap today. And I've already spent too much time messing around here, but that's okay. Have a couple of miles of bitumen, pavement, etc. before I reach the first uh, of many dirty roads. One thing interesting about the southern United States is boiled peanuts. That bloke's still on right there. G'day mate. There is going to be many orange groves along this route. This is not the first time I've ridden this route. This is a tweaked version. This area is far from flat. So granted they're not huge bergs, but for those who reckon the floor is flat, sorry. Let's do it for the road of the day. Here's a couple of orange trees close up. As you can see, the season is long over. And between them, trucks drive to collect the oranges, etc. And they're quite sandy, these little roads. The domain of bigger tires for sure. And if you haven't noticed the obvious, it's very uh, desolate out here. I mean, I love that. But there's always no tree cover. In fact, so far, there is no tree cover. So it's going to be a pretty tough ride. I am uh, well hydrated and have two stops along this route today. And there's a close-up of the edge of the road surface. Like a lot of sand and old shells. Probably millions of years old. If you look closely on the road surface, you can see evidence of bicycle tire tracks. So clearly, somebody else is out here riding. Maybe not today, another day. It's been about two years, two or three years actually, since I've ridden out here. Oh, look at that, more cyclists. As I take a short break beneath the shade of a tree, you can admire the washboard or corrugations of this road. It's now very hot and it's only 11.30, so this does not bode well. You're going to see me suffer and crack later on. Good times are guaranteed. Okay, better change my line. The transition from like a sandy shell road kind of composition to red clay. That's pretty wild. Well, here you go, tracks from someone before me. And that looks like the distinctive tread pattern of a Maxxis Rambler alongside as my tire tracks, the Panarista Gravel King, also very distinctive. But it just shows you 
that I probably spend too much tech time working on review bikes and looking at tires. Bloody hell. This is more detective work. Someone else is riding with a Panorama Gravel King tire, possibly this morning. Mm. Hello, if the planet Mars was to grow oranges on the surface, this is what it would look like. This is what the trucks look like that collect oranges. And, oh man, you can tell the curve right before me had pretty narrow tyres and possibly no longer experience riding these sorts of roads because they're really sunking. <laughs> look at this. All over the road. It's hilarious. I'm just crushing this line. This is where big tyres just destroy. I'm holding a pretty straight line and these riders are all over the place. Look at this, evidence of flailing about the place on the sand. I almost wish I was there to see it. It's quite of amusing seeing riders wiggle about the place, especially when they haven't got a lot of experience. It takes time to get the experience to ride uh, to loose soils and whatnot. A smaller gear, momentum is key definitely. And relax, and let the bike take its own course. We've got some loading action going on ahead of us. I better give this beast a wide berth. All right, dude. Those are some serious ladders. The weather forecast is supposed to be a chance of rain today. I saw a smidge of rain earlier. It's looking a bit dodgy over there towards the north, which is where I'm heading. There you go, so there's the school bus, now reconstituted to citrus harvesting. Well, I just learned how they collect the citrus with that special truck just there. Interesting. In fact, these trees have got a ton of citrus, so they're clearly picking still. Just demonstrates how much I know about the growing season. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these citrus crops are owned by Florida's uh, Natural, I think it's called. They're headquartered in nearby Lake Wales, which I passed as I drove through here earlier this morning. That's the world headquarters, in case you're wondering. And they do hold two, as I understand. Here you go, this is some desolation out here. We've got young citrus trees either side of the road. And not a bloody tree over the road. But, what a view. Wow. Okay, what do you think? Am I gonna get rained on? It's looking pretty dodgy behind me. And there's that lovely view ahead of me. What? That is a photograph and a half. Here you go, there's a couple of trees loaded up with oranges. And as you've seen from the scenes earlier, they are actively picking this area. Riding into a little bit of rain right now, it's quite light. Very refreshing, almost effervescent even. I've stumbled across the first sign of abandonment. There's a shed remaining. I'm not gonna go poke around inside. I don't want to be busted trespassing and there looks to be a foundation or remains of a house or some other bigger construct on the perimeter and there might be a toilet block over there or an outhouse or a dunny as I like to call it. There you go, looks like someone's left behind the apiarist set up, there are bees coming and going. There's a mega construction site on the left which is totally bollocked up around a little bit. The road is on private property and there's blokes over there so I can't exactly ride it. Meanwhile I'm sure I'm riding on other private property on this mega sand road. One handed <laughs> in the grass. Okay this sand road is too deep even for 48 millimeter tires. That was a bloody workout. This is a classic example of farm roads I talk about sometimes. Look how deep this bloody sand is. <laughs> Mind you it's stinking hot and uh, I'm uh, perspiring profusely I have a very healthy glow. Whew.
Well, this is bloody great. I've actually ended up on the construction site. Well, no one's given me any grief yet. Let's see how it goes whenever I enter this guardhouse area. I think it's a guardhouse. Oh, jeez. What could possibly go wrong? Well, there you go. Some blokes waved at me, so I guess it's not that bad. I just rode to a massive construction site. I got waved at by about four or five blokes. No worries. However, this is one of the reasons why I never upload anything to the internet, as in Strava, because this is highly likely trespassing, and at some point you probably will not be able to ride through here, like I have done in a very brazen manner. Onward. That's the best kind of selfie right there, the bike selfie. Human selfies, they're not so interesting. So my route has me going down this um, track. I like bush bashing a ton, but uh, that's a bit too rough even for me with the sand. And there's some rain moving in. At least it's a very refreshing rain, I'll say that. And admire that cool, desolate house. Hopefully you can see the steam off the road that indicates uh, the recent rain and how humid it is out here. So if you're in the market for any big tanks and uh, huge metal objects, this is the place to come to. So folks, if my calculations are correct, I've entered the town of Frostproof. Well, I'm on the outskirts. Need to do some sustenance, time to stop. Time to get some goodies. I'm bloody uh, knackered getting low on fluids. All right, let's head inside. We're looking uh, suspect with this mask on, eh? Be respectful and maintain a social distance between yourself and other customers, thank you. Yeah, get the coats. Two for two bucks, giddy up. Well, I've got a ton of hydration. Check this out. Of course, no judgment, please. The usual deal. Cokes and bloody all sorts of bollocks, water, etc. Really burning through fluids today. Thankfully, it's overcast now. Witness the madness live as I create a disgusting concoction. In this bottle is goo roctane mix, water, and coke. What could possibly go wrong here, right? Says he before a massive toxic stomach meltdown. Oh boy. Fizz fizz. Here we are, the city of Frostproof. Let's have a quick poke around Frostproof. Frostproof, I meant to say. End of the street, there's uh, quite a sizable lake. I'm gonna go check that out. And there we are, the water tower for Frostproof. You must always find the water tower whenever you visit these small towns. And on my right is the former Frostproof Railway Station. Anyone who knows me knows how much I love railway stuff. Let's have a quick lap. Nowadays, it's the St. Jude's Children's Hospital Frostproof History Museum Depot Restoration. I'm assuming this was also a freight depot or depot at some point. 
as well as a passenger terminal. There you go, frost proof. We have a little park that butts up to the former railway station. The track that is now parallel to the historic Frostproof railway station is looks like a siding, so it's not actually a main line and it may not be used too much anymore, judging by the rust on the surface of the rails. There be the Frostproof Community Centre. There's a lake here on the edge of Frostproof. I've no idea what its name is. I'll have to overlay that later on in the video. Let's check out the boardwalk. If anyone can intel that type of bird, I'd love to know. They're pretty common in Florida. Hello, booty. So you can see how windy it is. Quite choppy. All being well, I have a lovely tailwind heading home. Here's a bird's eye view of the frost-proof water tower. Time to keep exploring the rest of the town. As you can see, there's orange groves on the edge of town. There's the Citizens Bank building, founded in 1925. Well, at least the building was constructed then, supposedly. On the left, we have Frostproof City Hall. Here we have the United States Post Office, Frost Proof, Florida, 33843 is the zip code. Very nice, sir, very nice. Very nice. We're leaving Frost Proof and back on to dirt roads. This is a very good route to test one's mental fortitude. It is very desolate out here. No people, no cars, and nothing but orange groves for the most part for company, and a lot of heat. Hello, you can find my pink house with pink garage and brown doors, no worries at all. Babson Park, if you missed that sign, Babson Park. It doesn't appear to be too much here in Babson Park. There you go folks, you don't see that too often in the United States. A trestle type bridge for the railway. The railway nuts will appreciate this. There you go, Babson Park Post Office, and across the road, Weather International University. There you go, there's one water tower, and two more in the distance over there. I think I'm not too far from Lake Wales, if my memory serves me correctly. Amazing. This is one of the two spots of shade along this entire route thus far. Another interesting railway bridge over the road. 
finally upon some tailwind and it feels bloody amazing. Oh my. This road is pretty sandy. It's big tyres. Crushing, no worries at all. This scene reminds me so much of my Australian homeland. Desolate railway crossing, middle of nowhere, red soil. In addition to the lovely clay roads, there is some really nice pavement to ride around here that twists through the orange groves and so on. Everybody's favourite sign right there, pavement ends. On to the ending of the pavement. Another potentially dodgy road. This might be private property. There was no signs indicating as such. Hopefully, I'm not. I want to avoid getting in the poo poo. Had a great ride today. Although, admittedly, I am still in the pinch. Bloody hell. this lovely paved road for a couple of miles but about you know, 25 kilometers uh, 16 miles I guess left to ride so I look forward to getting this right over pretty tapped out fantastic route though part in the sun glare welcome to Lake Wales Ridge State Forest and all of the fees are currently waived for entering these lovely government sections of land this is a really lovely section of road. I've uh, ridden it before. It's about five miles long or just under eight kilometers of bliss. Hello, lad. This about ends the forest sector. I'm definitely itching closer towards my destination. I'll be back onto pavement in a few moments. Uh, entering Highlands County. Not too far to go now. So folks, this marks the final gravelly dirty sector of today's ride it was um, some other sectors i could have added it in the last time i rode here i uh did some interesting residential dirt roads anyway that's another story but uh it's probably a good time to wrap up this video so thanks for tagging along with me and seeing me grind away here in the uh florida summer i think the florida summer is well and truly here now anyway Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I'll see you in the next video.